welcome to BT Sport. And this is a formal welcome, Kevin, because I know that you're familiar with us, seeing as that you were our fighter of the year for 2020, as voted for by countless members of our uh, audience. You won it by a bit of a landslide, mate. So congratulations on that. Well done. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. That's that's very cool. Um, the, the story of your year, uh, everybody knows about it, five fights, five wins, but that that's not actually the whole story. Because I remember you being booked on UFC London and obviously the UFC London thing kind of fell off. And then there were other fights as well along the way that that, that fell off. You could have actually had, by my calculations, <laughs> nine fights in, in the calendar year. It was just crazy. Yeah, I mean, you know, I say no, I say no to your job. You know, I say no to a good time. Uh, my job is a good time. So, you know, every time they offer it to me, I'm, I'm ready to step up, you know, uh, I see Kelvin Gastelum got the the Robert Whitaker fight. Yeah, hurt my little heart because I would have stepped right on in. You know me, uh, but never say never, right? Where one vaginal muscle is pulled, there's always another one. What where, where does where does that mentality come from? Because we see a lot of fighters who obviously are, are a little bit more cautious with their matchmaking, a little bit more cautious with when and how they go about taking fights. What is that mentality that you have that you'll take it? Short notice, long notice, it doesn't matter what the notice is, you're just ready to rock and roll. I mean, my family raised a, a hard working man, so I'm just willing to work hard, you know, and it's like, uh, you, you tell me when it's time to go to work and I'm ready to go to work, you know. Uh, and then on top of that, I really just don't care, you know, and it's like all these other guys, they're worried about the record, they're worried about how good they look inside the cage, you know, it's right hands across the face, never look pretty, but boy, they get the job done. So, you know, that's what I like. <laughs> How's uh, how's the health as well, man? Because obviously one of those fights that could have happened was the Hermanson fight and it, it fell off because of a positive COVID test. W was it serious? Was it one of those that might have been a false positive? What's the situation? Because you were fighting two weeks later. I'm, I'm, no, I'm no doctor and I don't understand the whole COVID thing. Every time I seem to say something about it, I seem to get a little bashed online. <laughs> I really don't care. But at the end of the day, it's like I don't I'm not fully aware of the situation. I'm not fully aware how it goes down. They said I had COVID. My body told me I was good. Uh, I see a lot of these people, their body told them they were good, and now they're still feeling the symptoms. Yeah. They're not feeling the symptoms. So, you know, if there is some symptoms there, it's nothing that I notice. You know, it's nothing It's nothing worse than what it usually is. Is uh, is this one a little bit weird for you? Because this is quite a lengthy time out of the octagon between fights uh, since, since last May, isn't it? You know what I mean? What, what, what have we got? Like it, nearly three it's months the normal. before. <laughs> it's the normal. It's the, no it's the normal before I showed you guys what my normal is. You know what I mean? Oh. So when I first got in the UFC, they were booking me fights. Every three to six months, it seemed like, you know, and it's like I got in there uh, same year Israel Sanya got in there, but I got in there a few months late and, you know, he was rolling, you know, he got the ball rolling and there's a, quite a few guys that got in there. They got their first win and they kept the ball rolling. I got in there, got a loss and then I finally got the, you know, the dub and then another dub. It's just been a little bit of a slower process in the beginning, but boy, I caught up for it on 2020, huh? So. Yeah, mate, mate, did you catch up in 2020? Unbelievable. Just, just going back to that, joining the UFC. Um, because we saw you on the Contender Series, you got a victory in that Contender Series, and it didn't materialize in a contract. How did how did you deal with that process there? And then ob obviously they, they they brought you in obviously for the uh, Thiago Santos fight. But how did you deal with that process there and that disappointment? It wasn't. I wasn't disappointed. You know, it's like uh, it was. It was simply I didn't get it. I didn't go on there looking for a contract. I went in there looking for a check. You know, I got my check. I went home and I was ready to. I, mean, I was ready to do a Muay Thai bout right after. You know, so. It, it, I never sit down and I, I never dwell on, on anything too much. You know, what's meant to be is going to be and what it's not meant to be won't be. You know, mm. I won't force anything. Whatever happens, happens. You know, take what life gives me. So I wasn't well, down. I was out. Well, well, this is the sixth one in 10 months by my reckoning this uh, this weekend and uh, a main event as well, my man. How good does that feel to get? Uh, I know that Horrible. you don't normally I know that you normally don't do 25 minutes because you normally get them out of there oh. quite quick. But it must oh. be nice to have a length of time to get stuck in. No, uh, no, horrible, horrible. I might have to go out there and just let him do his work for two rounds and then get active in the third. You know what I mean? Because I'm not trying to fight for 25 minutes. You know, that's a long time to be fighting. Uh, you know, it's like after 25 minutes in the bed, I'm ready to go do something else. You know, and nothing's that <laughs> So it's like, you know, it is what it is. You know, she said I was quick. I said I'm bored. It's a difference. <laughs> Are you conscious of the magnitude of it? Because a win here... Well, you, you you'd probably leapfrog him, so you'd be on the cusp of top five and and, and fighting maybe one more before you were talking about UFC gold. 
No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's like uh, everybody's talking about the gold, but boy, look at these diamonds on my pinky. You know what I mean? It's like diamonds cost more than gold. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. I don't have to be the champ to be the champ. You get what I'm saying? Right yeah. now, the way I'm looking at it is the 85 division doesn't have a champ. Our champ went up to 205, vacated the belt, and lost. You're only as good as your last fight. My last fight was a sparring session in the gym. I got whooped on. You know, his last fight was a was a fight on TV. He lost. He's not the 85 champ. He's no champ right now. He's fighting for the vacay belt next time he fights. That's about it. He's not the champ. He's just uh, he's another guy swimming in the middleweight division. And uh, you ask the people, it's my division, not his. So it is what it is. What 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 do you make of uh, of Israel when he, when he talks about the middleweight division? The only name that he really mentions is is Darren Till. If Darren Till can beat Vittori, then he'll he fight. Liked- Vitt- then he'll fight him. He likes, to, he likes to fight where there's no there's no uh, there's no ideas of a takedown. Cause you see what happens when there's ideas of a takedown. Even his striking doesn't look as good. So when you when you invite a fight where you mix it up, he doesn't like that. He wants another kickboxing match. And if he wants another kickboxing match, he should go back to kickboxing. But he's been knocked out what once or twice there. You know, with five losses, he doesn't want to go back there. He's not the type of guy who likes to lose. I'm the type of guy who don't care. He's the type of guy who cares too much. You know, and that's why he's basing his life off anime, and I'm basing my life off how much money I can make. It's just a difference. You know, real life, fake life. You know, you guys like paper people? He's the paper guy. You guys like real deal Holyfield? Real deal Holyfield, baby. <laughs> well, we got a real one this weekend with you uh, and Derek. Uh, there seems to be a bit of needle in there. Why don't you like him? Uh, you know what? I didn't like him before because he always is in my inbox playing these little games, you know. And it's like now he stepped up to the fight. And as long as he shows up to the fight, there's no more not, not, not like there. You know, and it's like as long as he steps up for the fight, win, lose, draw, no matter what the outcome is, even if he dies in there, I will respect him after that. You know, because he stepped up the fight. But uh, all that in my inbox, you know, trying to give me advice and coach me and stuff like that. Shut the freak up, bro. You know, there's no reason for you to try and coach me. We have like the same record. You know what I mean? He's a few years older. And that just means he's a few years slower, if you ask me. You know, older than me. Not as many fights as me. You know, it's like, I don't know, man. He's just not my cup of tea, you know. But not very many people are. I like a weird cup of tea. You can say that much. Do you judge beating him higher than beating Jacare, given the stage of careers that where they're, they're currently at? No, no way. No way whatsoever. This man, what, knocked out Jacare? I mean, Jacare knocked that man out twice? Come on now. There's no way possible. Jacare beat Brunson twice. You know, uh, unless I slip on a banana peel, I don't see Brunson even getting close. You know what I mean? So speed's different. I know he probably thinks he's stronger, but the strength's different. You know, it's like, you couldn't manhandle Izzy. You can't manhandle me. You know, it's like uh, the Derek Brunson fight to me was almost unmotivating, you know, but I found a way to motivate myself, <laughs> you know? So it's like, but Jacare, on the other hand, talking about a legend here, you're talking mm. about somebody who's already paved his way to be who he's going to be. And it's like Jacare. Now that's a great fight. Brunson, bumpskin, you know, find a bum on a corner. You just got to make sure you don't catch nothing. <laughs> So I'm assuming then that uh, you will be in full flow with the uh, with the talking during the fight as well, because that's the thing that a lot of fans have fallen in love with, man. You're talking all the way to the octagon. You're talking during the octagon. You talk all the way out of the octagon. It's part. It's part. It's part of the Kevin Holland thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, talk the talk, walk the walk, big mouth, big action, jabber jaws, however you want to call it. You know, I'm gonna run that mouth. You know, even if he's on top, smacking me, I'm still gonna be talking. I might. Lick my finger, stick it in his ear, and see what he's really about. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's, it's it's no big deal. You know, it's, this is what I do. You know, it's like I'm a talk. I'm a talk. He thinks he's gonna shut me up. No way, Jose. Does that help with your motivation during the fight, though? The talking does it help? Does it keep you lasered into what the actual job at hand is? <sighs> no, oh gosh. no. I can be pretty focused while I'm quiet too. You know, it's like I'm I'm deadly focused. <laughs> you don't want me quiet. You want me talking. You know, as long as I'm talking, he might stand a chance unless he gets, you know, they say it's a mental warfare. And if, if the mental is too much for him, then <laughs> that night for Brunson. Tell me how this one plays out, Kevin. Tell me what we can see on BT Sport in the early hours of Sunday morning here in the UK. Man, I got this, I got this bullet tattooed on my right arm, right? It's like a sniper. I'm going to bang him up until I can't bang him up no more. He's going to shoot for takedowns and I'm going to shoot my right hand. You know what I mean? Somebody's getting popped. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> 